Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Q&A recording of the film, As Far As I Can Walk, playing as part of the 12th European Union Human Rights Film Days. I'm really excited today to be joined by the director of the film, Stefan Arseniovic. Hello, Stefan. How are you? Hello. Thank you very much for having our film. I'm happy the Turkish audience will see it. It's great. Yes, and we're really happy that you're here with us today. First of all, I just want to give some a little information about Stefan, and then uh, we can start uh, talking. Uh, he's bo he born in Belgrade in uh, 1977. He graduated in film and television directing from the Faculty of Dramatic Arts in Belgrade, where he know he now teaches teaches film directing as a master's level. For his short films, in particular, Torsion, he won over 30 national and international awards, including Golden Beer at Bernal, uh, the European Film Award and an Academy Award Oscar nomination for a short live action film. Since 2015, he's also the program manager of First Films First, Gotha Institute's professional training program for Southeast European film directors. So, Stefan, do you want to add anything else? this information no it's uh, more than enough more than enough thank you very much <laughs> thank you and before we start to talk about uh, as far as i can walk i want to talk about uh, another film that you shot in istanbul maybe you want to tell us about that a little bit yeah it's i i just i i'm really connected through uh, to to turkish culture in istanbul uh, i w i was first time in istanbul in 2010 when uh, it was the capital of uh, culture of europe and i got a great opportunity uh, to know the city through filmmaking which was very special actually in a project istanbul do not forget me six uh, directors from europe yeah. were invited to make their short films about uh, istanbul um it was really uh, amazing experience i was living in jehangir i was shooting in grand bazaar uh, great and uh, I really spent some uh, together like half a year uh, in Istanbul. Uh, it was all thanks to thanks to the artistic director of this project, uh, Hussein Karabe, uh, film director, my colleague and a great friend. And uh, I, I, from that moment on, I think I'm completely addicted to Istanbul. I love it. I, uh, you know, whenever I can, I, 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 I want to come there and uh, really feel at home uh, in some way and on, on another way in a kind of a very magical place that, 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 that is very, very special to me. Well, I'm really happy to hear that. That's why I wanted to ask you about this before we start talking about your film, because, I mean, I really want our audience to know that you were here a couple of years ago and you had a great Istanbul experience. So I'm really happy that you love our city. <laughs> I love the city. I love the people. I, I met some wonderful people with with whom I I was working, uh, and uh, really, it 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 stays it stays with me. It feels like my second home. Great. I hope you will come here again soon. So, uh, I'm we we can start uh, about talking about talking <coughs> about your film. First of all, I, uh, can you just uh, tell us about the story a little bit? And I'm curious about how were you inspired to uh, shot uh, such a story? Uh, how did this project evolve? Can you tell us about that a little bit? Well, it was kind of, it had the, the beginning, it has two beginnings, the, the origin of this film. It uh, First of all, I we have this uh, very uh, famous um, epic uh, poem that is from medieval time. Uh, it's called Banovic Trahinya. It's very well known here. Everybody learns it in school. We have uh, one of the main streets in Belgrade named by it. Uh, uh, it was uh, real. It's really important part of our natural national heritage, and um, the story is very kind of well, not simple, but it's a it's a love triangle, uh, and basically it's a story about love, very complicated love, about empathy and about forgiveness. And I always had a feeling there are too many films that we are watching that are about revenge. Uh, but here we had a you know main character who kind of loses almost everything, but he decides not to make a revenge, yeah. and it's towards his wife, but but to forgive and to try to understand. And I thought this is really something that we 
um, in this world need more and more. I have a feeling that, 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 that this time that we are living in is just putting us between two um, choices. We always have to choose the side and there is always just two sides. And I never feel like I'm, you know, part of just one side. I always kind of feel I'm some third or whatever. Uh, and so so I, I've had a feeling, you know, these values of, of empathy and love against all odds is, is something that we really need. And we kind of forgot. And especially also in a in a in a in a like a our uh, intimate relationship very often you know you just try something and if it doesn't work out you just give up on relationship and find somebody who will be uh you know the person of your dream which is basically impossible uh so there are all the ideas why i thought this this could this story which is very old um, and yeah, I say from medieval times, but it could work today. And I was thinking how to make it uh, uh, contemporary. I have to say there is um, also a um, classical ad adaptation of this song that was done in 1982. And uh, uh, it was called uh, Internationally Falcon. And the main character is played by a famous Italian star, Franco Nero. It was famous film uh and but i want to do something modern and something different and then it was um uh, uh refugee crisis started migrant crisis belgrade was part of uh, a ba so-called balkan migrant route and i was uh, seeing every day thousands of people really on the street uh uh you know desperate and you know uh very lost and <laughs> it, it quite reminded me on the other hand on on some other of my experiences i as you know as i live in serbia we had this yugoslavian wars in the 90s when i was growing up and i remember you know in elementary school and high school how always there will be new people who were refugees from the wars i've been through you know not refugee uh, experience but through poverty and war so i i could i could really easily relate to these people mm. and among <coughs> among sorry among those people i met one really special guy uh it's um, a young man from ghana his name uh, is uh, ibrahim ishak and unlike all the other i mean most of the other migrants who just want to go to the west europe he really wanted to stay here in serbia and he really loved serbia <coughs> i'm sorry i'm a little bit ill no so he was so so I, I i i started talking with ibrahim ishak and he was wanted to be a professional football player but he couldn't so he was training with a local football club but he couldn't play official games until he get the asylum um and uh, he was learning the language he spoke quite well our language he volunteered in red cross and i thought what if you know somebody like that would be our main character in the this modern adaptation of a very traditional um uh, a very traditional uh, epic Serbian song. And uh, uh, it felt very interesting, you know. Uh, 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 around that time, it was Angela Merkel who said, uh, the migrants are new Europeans. And then I thought, well, th we could really make an artistic experiment. And what if, you know, our uh, famous national hero in a contemporary adaptation would be somebody who is actually a migrant. This is how it all started. And uh, yeah, we combined these two quite different worlds into one. Yeah, it's it's a great story. It's uh, it's in a way it also uh, contains a lot of sorrow, of course, but it's also a great story. What I liked about the story is, uh, especially nowadays, uh, the world is dealing a lot of refugee crisis, and a lot of people's lives are getting harder and harder because they're trying to find a place uh, they belong, find a place to home, a home they want to live, and. Sometimes also uh, Abobo, the female character, says this in the movie. She says that I'm not just a number on a paper. She still has dreams. She still has passions. She wants to be an actress in London. And she's still a human being like mm -hmm. any other human being uh, who, who's got dreams. And uh, in a way, 
Uh, the film, I think, reminds us that uh, we're all, yes, there is always a political kind of way that uh, when we're talking about these problems, like yeah, refugee problems and uh, people are trying to migrate from some place to another. But while we're talking about that, I guess sometimes we forget that there are people who has to maybe give up on their dreams, who has to maybe face the reality that they cannot go after their dreams like another person uh, who doesn't have the problem the problems they got so i think i just want to talk that about that a little bit mm. that's that's really affected me so can you just i, I thank you very much for that thank you very much for that absolutely i had a feeling that uh also uh you know in the media when everything was happening but even now if you look at the uh, at the, at the refugees you don't really see um real human stories you yeah. you you there are just statistics there are these projections and uh and you know uh depending on what kind of media is saying there you you see these people as threat or you see them as uh just some poor victims i i really wanted to portray them as human beings and and mm -hmm. people like us because this is exactly as i said uh, partly i have this experience so uh, uh and and partly you know when i did a research for this film i met so many people that were really like us um my co one of the co-writers uh, who was writing this film with me is a french uh, writer nicolas ducre and i remember once when we went to a migrant hotspot and then some volunteers came to us and uh, they thinking that we were migrants as well and they offered us help and i remember for me it was normal but for the this french writer it was completely uh, unbelievable he couldn't understand how can somebody think that he is uh, to to you know that he's a migrant even uh, for a second and and then then you know it kind of really made some process into in in him and this is exactly the process i wanted to do with our film mm -hmm. uh that you know these people are you are, you know in a lot of uh, films that, that are dealing with migrants migrants are uh, for all the good reasons uh uh in or for all the good intentions migrants are portrayed as uh, uh um, victims they are really put only uh, uh, into identity of victim and uh, you know just spend 10 minutes there and you will see life which is much bigger than somebody being a victim nobody wants to be a victim so for me it was very important to actually put in the foreground uh, this complex beautiful uh, young characters and their love story basically and then, uh, uh, then uh, all the, the fact that they are refugees comes uh, comes uh, as in a in a background in a way. And a lot of people, when they see the film, they say, "Oh, but actually, it's more a love story than a film about refugees." But you know, why would refugees not have love stories? You know, exactly. And yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And another thing, you know, it's often you think with you know refugees, these are these other people who you know who are poor and you know i don't know uh some it, it all happens to somebody else but if you spend five minutes with them you realize it's people like you and it now you know thinking about global situation it can happen to any of us unfortunately yeah. so uh yeah i uh i i also wanted to emphasize that it's not only about when you care about the migrants it's not only about giving these people food and shelter you know it's not only about surviving it's it's about um uh, fulfilling their you know basic human capacities and needs and that are much bigger than just surviving that's why my my, my characters have really big dreams one, one, one he wants to become a football player she wants to be, become an actress i met people who are into art in uh, among migrants and of course for me uh, they were more, the most interesting because i could relate to them so so yeah they 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 try to make anyway the whole idea of migrating is to having a better life and 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 they 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 try not to give up on their dreams 
Yeah, yeah. And I think you express, express that in a really beautiful way. So uh, I hope that audience will also be realize it in th this pers from this perspective. And I also wanted to talk about a human rights point of view about with, with this film. Uh, which uh, human rights violations you're talking about and which uh, you are trying to show the audience that these characters should have these rights you're telling something to the audience can you just little tell us that about it well, well first of all a right to move which is which is yeah. really normal and right a right to uh, exist you know and uh and uh, and and then of course this as i mentioned the right to 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 fulfill their uh, human um uh, uh, what's the word uh, qualities you know to fulfill uh, the potential they have yeah. uh and and oh, each of us have different potential but but our i guess uh mean uh, of being on this planet is to fulfill the best we can uh, our potential that we have and this is something that is not barely survival yeah yeah exactly <laughs> exactly i i also wanted to sorry i i just want yeah. uh, also I, I what was he also for me on a human level very a uh, kind of uh, confusing and uh, in a way if you think humanly about it unacceptable is that w w usually we think migrants it's this you know homogen group of people but actually when you when you start meeting them you realize there are groups and groups who have very different rights and what we and this is what we addressed also in our film you know you have uh, refugees who, who are coming from uh, uh, war-torn uh, countries, but then you have economical migrants and yeah. uh, who who have much less rights because you know there there is no war in their countries. Uh, th their situation is not as bad, you know. I I, I and then I, I think it's kind of. Uh, ridiculous to 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 think in these terms. Who has worse situation? I think uh, there are all people in need, and we uh, as humanity have to, uh, as civil civilized people, have to uh, help them. I, I'm sure. Also, again, if you spend five minutes with them, you will realize that nobody would take this big, uh, dangerous trip uh a journey uh if they don't have to i mean it's not yeah. it's not like they live, lived comfortable life and uh, and so they decide to walk for thousands of uh, kilometers on foot and 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 they have no clue uh, what what waits for them they sleep in a, a forest uh, in the winter they you know a lot of them unfortunately die uh and you know, i mean nobody uh would go to this kind of journey if they don't have a really good reason for it and then administration comes and say but your reason is good enough and you're not so good so you can pass and you can that was also one of the things that was very unacceptable for me if you just think about these people as as humans as somebody equal to you yeah, in an ideal world, they, they would be all equal and they would have all equal rights. Uh, I don't know, maybe I hope someday that will happen. But uh, until then, I think it's really great to show these aspects of uh, uh, human lives. And uh, I think um, shooting films and shooting documentaries and are a great way of doing that. So thank you for this beautiful film and thank you for being here with us again today. Uh, thank you for joining. Thank you us. very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for the invitation. And uh, yeah. I hope the audience in Turkey will enjoy it. Yeah, I hope so too. So I hope to see you soon, maybe uh, in Istanbul someday. <laughs> I really hope so. I really yeah. hope so. Yeah. Bye. Teşekkürler. Bye.